Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm going to do my comparison of the Chicago White Sox to the Oakland A's, who are, as I have mentioned before in similar um, videos, which you may want to go back and check out. Uh, they are a team that we will play even though they're in the West and we don't compete directly with them for divisional for a divisional title but we may be competing with them for a wild card spot so it uh, it pays to know your competition so now if you look in and by the way if you notice if you watch the other ones you've seen that I had a much bigger um, flip chart that I was using and this is a much smaller one a little bit more compact and uh, that's because my production budget got cut no, not really but anyway um, so yeah it's a, it's a little smaller but it is also a little closer and you can probably see this a little better than you know you were able to read the other charts and the other videos so we will go on with the analysis. Now, if you look at the White Sox side, this is about the same, um, the same lineup, the same uh, configuration that I've been showing in all the other videos. Uh, the lineup is the same. You've got Lewis Robert there at, at the top in center field. You've got Tim Anderson at shortstop. You've got, um, you know, uh, Encarnacion will be the DH. Uh, the, one of our new acquisitions. Uh, Abreu will be at first. Moncada at third base. Um, and, uh, you know, the Mendic Madrigal connection down there at second. Madrigal may be coming up later in the year, but Mendic holding it down until he arrives. Um, and then you've got, of course, Jimenez uh, in left field, who last year hit 31 home runs for the White Sox. Um, in right field, the newly arrived Mazzara will be in right. Um, we just got him from the Texas Rangers. And then, of course, you know, you've got the end also, Yasmani Grandal. Who could forget about Yasmani Grandal at, at, at catcher? And then you've got the rotation, you know, that's got uh, the usual suspects, Giolito, um, the um, uh, Lopez, Keuchel, Gio Gonzalez, who we just went out and got along with Keuchel. Uh, and, then, and then possibly Dylan Cease will be in the, um, in the fifth spot or in one of those spots. And then, of course, you know, over there on the other side, I've got the bullpen. Kopech, I've got listed. Who knows if Kopech will really be on the White Sox this year. They may just keep him down in the minors for a little more seasoning because, really, we've got some good arms up here, you know. with uh, Herrera really should have a bounce-back season. Uh, Evan Marshall's good. Uh, Jimmy Cordero is very good. Um we, we just signed c uh away from the Chicago Cubs. Um, who else is out there? Yeah, Aaron Bummer, he's doing well. Uh, Jace Fry is probably capable of doing better than he did last year. So the bullpen has no end of candidates for it. So, um, you know, people like um, Carson Fulmer and... Um, Kopech may actually get another year in the minors for some seasoning or, you know, the occasional appearance if we have injuries on the team. But, um, you know, more or less, you know, you, that's probably what you're looking at for the, for the bullpen. And then, of course, down there on the bench, we've got Lurie Garcia, James McCann, Zach Collins, and Adam Engel. And I also heard a rumor, actually somebody told me, that the White Sox went out and signed um, Gorky's Hernandez. I don't know why we would need Gorky's Hernandez. I can't, for the life of me, conceive why, but maybe just for depth 
and they'll have him down in the minors and then if we get hit with a rash of injuries he can come up and be a backup fourth outfielder or something I don't know but I don't expect him to be on the White Sox so that's what you got over here you know the White Sox it's the usual you know that I've always put up and pretty much this is you can probably bank on this being their 25 or you know um, these players consisting of their 26 man um, major league roster so that brings us to the A's now the A's are expected to be a very good team in fact there are some analysts out there that think that the A's will win the West I still don't think that even if the Astros are not allowed anymore to bang on garbage cans or wear buzzers under their uniforms I still think they're going to win the West but the A's have a very formidable team as you can see from this chart I mean you've got Marcus Semien up there at shortstop he hit 285 last year and had 33 home runs the dude busted out I mean he's hit home runs before but then last year he didn't and so now he's back to doing it again and then you got uh, Chapman who hit 249 last year but he had 36 home runs and then you got Matt Olson who came up with him and he had 36 home runs last year but only hit 267 you got Chris Davis not the Chris Davis for the Orioles this one's a little better he hit 220 and had 23 home runs last year so he's slipping he's possibly on the slippery slope we'll have to see then you got Biscotti the right fielder he hit 249 last year but I think that was an off year and I'm hoping it was just an off year for him because he's on one of my Stratomatic teams but he hit 249 with 13 home runs you can probably expect a little better than that from Piscotti this year I would think you got Mark Canna who hit 273 with 26 home runs then you got Luriano in center field the dude with the serious arm I mean that guy has an absolute howitzer for an arm but he hit 288 with 24 home runs too which is also not bad uh, Barreto may be the second baseman although I've, I've seen uh, reports that it it may be somebody else but if it's Barreto um, well we'll see what happens because last year he only had 57 at bats and uh, hit 123 and then the catcher is expected to be Sean Murphy very Irish name there and uh, he hit 245 with four home runs in 53 at bats so the A's have not seen much of him and yet in most of the magazines I've read he's projected to be their catcher so their uh their starting rotation looks like fires at the top i would think um uh, of course mike fires is the one that exposed the houston uh cheating scandal or at least verified it or did whatever he did when he came out about it he was 15 and 4 last year though with a 390 earned run average and then you got frankie montas who was 9 and 2 with a 263 earned run average Sean Manea will be in the starting rotation now last year he only had 30 innings pitched but you know him from past years he um you know he has been up with the A's before he's uh this is not like he's like this was the first time he jumped on the scene and in the 30 innings that he did pitch last year he had a 123 earned run average so that's not bad um and then uh, Lazardo is another one who we haven't seen much of but he is projected to be in their rotation and he had a 150 earned run average in only 12 innings pitched so we don't know much about him and I guess we and the A's and everybody else is going to find out about him uh, their bullpen has some uh, some good arms out there Liam Hendricks right at the top he had a 150 earned run average last year or a 180 180 sorry um, and then you got you know Yasmero Petit uh, Joaquin Soria Jake Diekman Jake Diekman allows 
a few too many runs for a reliever, but he does have a very high strikeout rate. Uh, TJ McFarlane, Chris Bassett, who may actually be in the rotation, or he might be one of those guys that does the back and forth, the yo-yo thing, where he's in the bullpen sometimes, and then he's an emergency starter or spot starter. Um, I'm surprised, frankly, that the magazines don't project him to be in their rotation. He really probably should be, but they've got him in the bullpen. Uh, then you got uh, Dan Daniel Mangden, who also did some starting last year. So it looks like they've got uh, some guys that could, you know, do either one for them. And then uh, Lou Trevino and Paul Blackburn. So they got some arms out there in the bullpen. And then on their bench, they've got Robbie Grossman, uh, who is a backup outfielder. Chad Pinder, who is a jack-of-all-trades, but master of none. And then uh, some guy named uh, Austin Allen, who's going to be the backup catcher. So, that's your A's right there, but that is a formidable team. I mean, look at that lineup, you know. You got, what, what was it? three guys that had over 30 home runs and then another two that had over 20 and then another guy had 13 and that was Piscotti and like I said I think he just had an off year so that lineup is going to be very formidable this rotation still probably has a few question marks you know we haven't seen a lot of Lizardo Mane is coming back from an injury um so, and Fires is, what is he, like 35 years old, 35, 36, something like that. I don't know what he is, but he's, you know, he's getting up there. So, we'll see. And then, you know, Frankie Montas, he's not like he's been pitching for 10 years in the major league. So, we really don't know a lot about him either. Um, but the, the pitching staff, even as many question marks as there are about it, you got to believe that they could probably get by with not being the best of staffs with a lineup like this. So, um, so that's what we got with the A's. Now, as far as when we play them, we play them in Chicago June 26th to the 28th. And then we play them in Oakland September 14th to the 16th. And those would be key games if we were going right up against them head to head for one of the wild card spots. That would be those would be some huge games if that happens. Um, but anyway, you know that's only again that's only like six or seven games. So this is a very formidable team, and it's a good thing we only have six or seven games against them because I would not want to be playing these guys like twelve or eighteen times like we got to play the teams in the uh, in the central division. So, I'd much rather be playing the Tigers 18 times than these guys. So, uh, so what do you guys think? You think the A's got a team that, uh, you know, could be uh, formidable, someone we would need to worry about? I mean, I think we we don't necessarily need to worry about them as far as, like, the head-to-head -head games, because, again, it's only six or seven games. But we do need to be concerned about the fact that if we want a wild card spot, they're a team that's going to be looking for one of those and may actually get it. So that would leave us with only one potential spot if we don't win the Central from the Twins. And the Twins look pretty good too. So be interested in what you guys think of the A's. Um, you think that they're going to be a team that we... Uh, need to worry about as far as the wild card goes um and uh do you see them being as good as they were i mean you know three guys with over 30 home runs and then another two or three with over 20 you think that's uh repeatable or do you think they're going to take a step back i mean the thing is they've got a good a good team defense and then they got all those guys hitting like that but i would be very interested to hear what everyone thinks um, again, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, leave a note below, um, or you can also contact me at, uh, 
any of my contact information uh, sites right here. There's my email on the bottom, my Twitter up top, Instagram. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, send it to people that you think might like the video. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.